Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and in this video, I'll show you how I repaired my trusty 13 inch MacBook Air from 2011 when everyone around me told me it was a lost case. It gave me eight years of sterling service before the battery condition worsened to a point it would no longer start up even under mains power. Weirdly, the MagSafe charger light would stay lit green when connected, implying a full battery charge, but the system still wouldn't start. Now in its final days of operation it indicated that the battery needed a service, it had done about 850 cycles, but the Apple store said it was so old they no longer had official spares, and independent repair shops had no luck with it either. At this point most folk told me I should just buy a new model, but I hate waste and I wondered if I could get it working again with a third party replacement battery. After all, while I'd upgraded to a MacBook Pro for my own work a couple of years ago, the old Air was still perfectly good for family projects and as a spare computer. Why throw it away if you could get it working at a reasonable price? Now before proceeding with a MacBook repair you'll need to identify your model for the correct tools and parts. It's written in tiny lettering on the underside and here you can see mine is a model A1369 and that indicates it's a MacBook Air 13 inch from 2011. I should also say any repair you attempt is obviously at your own risk and your mileage may vary. Mine was a last ditch attempt at revival when everyone was telling me to chuck it out. The first step is to open it up and to discourage people from mucking around Apple uses unusual screws which require a special tool called a pentalobe. Now don't even try using a normal screwdriver as these will just ruin the heads on the screws and you'll never get them out. Luckily pentalobe tools are readily available online or in special tool shops, just search for one with your MacBook model name, this one just cost me a few pounds. Then very gently and carefully use it to remove all the screws on the underside of the case, there's 10 in my model, and since they're often different lengths, make a note of which one went where for reassembly later. Oh, and obviously make sure that you've got the power disconnected before you start. Opening the case reveals the battery, which here is the mostly rectangular shaped part with four main cells occupying most of the internals. First you'll need to unplug it from the motherboard and you'll see a handy plastic tab to grip as you gently pull the plug out of the socket, it's, it's actually really easy to do. Next you'll need to unscrew the battery, mine had a pentalobe screw in each of the corners and one in the middle. Again put them aside carefully and remember which one went where. With the battery removed, I wondered if the MacBook would actually still power up under mains power alone, so I closed the case, reconnected the power supply, and to my surprise it did actually work and booted up for the first time in months. Now at first I thought I had a solution as I didn't mind using the laptop under mains power only, but there's two catches. First, with no battery backup, if you accidentally knock that magnetic power cord out of the machine, it'll switch off immediately, losing any unsaved work. That's not really a very reassuring way to use your computer, is it? Secondly, MacBooks deliberately run slowly with their batteries disconnected as a kind of protected mode. So even if you secured the power plug with some tape or blue tack or something, or you'd have a much slower system than before. Now, it's okay for very basic tasks or for retrieving and backing up work that you thought you'd lost, but it's not good for much more. So I had a catch-22. If I wanted the normal speed and protection from the power plug falling out, I needed to have a battery connected. But if I used my original battery, my machine wouldn't even start. So I went shopping for a spare battery using my Mac model name and there's loads of third-party options available. There's also loads of varying reviews, with even the best batteries not apparently working on everyone's MacBooks, so check the returns policy and again proceed at your own risk. I ended up going for an e Egoway model, which costs around £55 or dollars. I didn't mind if the battery life on this unit wasn't particularly great, I just wanted the machine to power up and run at full speed under mains power. The e Egoway battery on the left looks almost identical to the original Apple battery on the right, with only their labelling to really tell them apart, and the new battery slots perfectly into the hole left by the old one. So just pop it in, screw it carefully in place, and connect the battery to the motherboard. You may find this easy to connect it first and screw the battery in afterwards. Most third-party batteries are also supplied with the pentalobe tools to fit them, so if you think your issue is a battery-related one, there may be no need to buy the pentalobe tools separately as I did earlier. With the battery fitted in place, just close the lid and you're ready to start testing. I reconnected my power lead and was reassured to see the light turn amber to indicate charging, something I'd not seen for months. And lo and behold, the machine started up, indicating 47% charge on the battery as it was delivered. At this point, it's tempting to just start using the machine as normal, but it's important to calibrate the battery first with a full charge and discharge cycle. 
So first, fully recharge the battery until the MagSafe plug indicates green. If it's still amber after, say, half a day, just unplug and reconnect to see if that fixes it. Next, you're going to need to run the battery all the way down with fairly normal use, so open the power saving settings and drag the sliders all the way and untick the option to put the disc to sleep for both mains and battery power. Then disconnect the power cord and leave it doing something like playing a video or doing some other task until the battery runs out. I set mine to go through one of my YouTube playlists playing full screen in 1440p with the screen brightness set to full. I checked the battery remaining every hour or so and it seemed to discharge in a fairly linear fashion, eventually draining fully after 3 hours and 20 minutes, which isn't bad for constant streaming of HD content from YouTube over Wi-Fi with the screen at full brightness. Then recharge it again fully until the light has been green for at least a couple of hours. Here's the green charger light on mine, followed by the reassuring startup gong. And once I've started the system and disconnected the power lead, you can see the battery charge indicating 100%. It seems happy to run at battery power and also behaves well when the lid's closed and reopened again. I've also left it for several hours when closed before reopening and again it seems fine with only a percent or two of battery drained. It's still early days though and during further testing I found that shutting down fully sometimes prevented a restart under battery power only and some fixes required me to disconnect then reconnect the internal battery again. It's almost like it needs to reset something and before you mention it I have also tried resetting the SMC that's where you hold down a selection of keys while you're pressing the power button that in my case didn't help. So obviously this situation is not ideal, but I'm hoping that just closing the lid and putting it to sleep when not in use and keeping the battery topped up with mains power could be a longish term solution. Either way, my trusty MacBook Air, condemned to death by many experts, lives to fight another day thanks to a fairly simple DIY repair that cost me just £55. If you're experiencing similar issues with your MacBook, I hope some of my tips will help breathe new life into an old faithful friend. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.